Hi everybody, it's October 4, 2018. As, as much as I detest Amy Goodman of Democracy Now!, believing that she is the quintessential queen of disinformation agents, well, one of the reasons why she's queen is because she does tell a lot of truth and then she comes in with her climate change, global warming, disinformation. That really is very upsetting. But uh, passed along to me was a Democracy Now! link, and this is on Trump. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of you know the New York Times had an investigation, and that investigation was published uh, when today, yesterday, about Trump and uh, his fraud. Uh, that kept the Trump family from evading hundreds of millions of dollars in taxes and a lot of other fraud. But uh, I will link below to this video on Democracy Now! So if you can stomach listen to, listening to Amy Goodman, then click on the link below. Um, she is interviewing the investigative journalist who published the piece. Now, everybody knows, right? You don't become a mega billionaire if you're an angel, right? That's not how our system works. So, Trump, a lot of the Trump supporters realize that he was no doubt engaged in corruption, but he really does want to save America. How is it that we have been so sold on the idea that liars, narcissists, corrupt to the core people are also good and want to save ordinary Americans, want to make their life better? I, I just don't get it. Um, but an awful lot of people do believe that. And I don't. I really don't. I, I think that when an individual is corrupt to the core, narcissistic lies, um, they're not going to immediately change once they walk into the door of the White House. So um, I just want to give you some information that, you know, I hope I never have to do this again. Yeah, I do have a lot of people who are angry at me for my position on Trump, and I don't get it. But I want you to listen to just a few videos. Listen to what he has to say here. They had gang rape, a gang rape, many times. Well, that turned out to be false. So many different charges. Guilty until proven innocent. That's very dangerous for our country. That's very dangerous for our country. And I have it myself all the time. But for me, it's like a part of the job description. You know, I hear on talk shows people saying that they like Donald Trump because he speaks what they think. Okay. Now, one would hope that they had a president who was behaving in a way that was dignified, we have lost that greatly. And I do not think that it was uh, very dignified for this president to come out and talk about this Ford woman while I had the same take on Ford as Trump is expressing right here. I'm not the president of the United States. And as far as I was concerned, I think that he should have been very silent on that issue and just let, you know, the FBI do their investigation and then, you know, uh, the results of the investigation will be revealed. He should have just shut his mouth, but he doesn't shut his mouth. But people like that. They like that he just comes out and he's a real person. It's kind of like when George Bush was running. I'm going to vote for him. I'm going to vote for him because he's the type of guy that I wouldn't mind sitting down having a beer with. Great. 
Okay, that's the type of guy that we want as a quote-unquote leader. Now, I'm not a leader person. Everybody needs to become their own leader. But, you know, if you're going to be voting for leaders, then don't you want to vote for someone who is dignified and someone who is kind of like the cream of the crop, you know? Not someone that you're going to sit in a local beer bar with and drink a beer. All right. Um, but let's go on. Let it happen to me. Shouldn't happen to him. Shouldn't happen to him. What he's going through. 36 years ago, this happened. I had one beer. Right? I had one beer. Well, do you think it was... Nope, it was one beer. Oh, good. How did you get home? I don't remember. How'd you get there? I don't remember. Where is the place? I don't remember. How many years ago was it? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. What neighborhood was it in? I don't know. Where's the house? I don't know. Upstairs, downstairs, where was it? I don't know. But I had one beer. That's the only thing I remember. And a man's life is in tatters. A man's life is shattered. His wife is shattered. His daughters, who are beautiful, incredible young kids, they destroy people. They want to destroy people. These are. Okay. Well, I'm sure all of you, along with me, agree. Yes. Uh, there's an awful lot of people who stop at nothing to destroy people. Well, what about Trump? Listen to this. Does anybody have anything to, not even a question, a statement as to how we can bring about uh, law enforcement in a very good, civil, lovely way, but we have to stop crime, right? Would anybody like to make a statement? Couple Mr. Of President, yes, sir. on the asset forfeiture, we've got a state center. Okay, asset forfeiture is a way for law enforcement to steal property and money from Americans. And an awful lot of innocent Americans have money and their property stolen through asset forfeiture. That's not a good and lovely way to stop crime. But here, they're going to be talking about asset forfeiture. Senator in Texas it was, was talking about introducing legislation to require conviction before we could receive that forfeiture Can money. You believe that? And I told him Can that... Can you believe that? Oh, so a person has to be found guilty before uh, you steal his money and property? Didn't Trump just say something about innocent before proven guilty? Oh, but when people have an agenda, an agenda, they can flip-flop on an awful lot. They can prove themselves to be hypocrites. So if, if this guy actually believes that one, you know, you are innocent before proven guilty, that should extend the entire, uh, all of justice, but not according to Trump. Uh, I've got an agenda. I want Kavanaugh on the Supreme Court. So that's what I'm going to bring up. Innocent before proven guilty, but not here. The cartel would build a monument to him in Mexico if he could get that legislation Who's the back. state senator? Do you want to give his name? We'll destroy his career. <laughs> ah, we'll destroy his career. Oh, just like what the Democrats are doing to Kavanaugh because they have an agenda and he has an agenda to save Kavanaugh so it's guilty. Uh, it's innocent before proven guilty except when he has an agenda then it's not innocent before proven guilty and will destroy his career. That's how these people operate. This is who you support. A guy that, well, if somebody is acting in a way that goes against 
uh, my achieving my ends will destroy his career. You know, look, when you are of low consciousness, you're about protecting the personality and you're not about principle. This guy is a low consciousness guy. He's not about principle. He's about getting his own way and just ramroading his agenda through. So we can't expect to get, you know, a moral society when we have these quote unquote leaders that we put, oh no, that are selected to get into positions of power so that they can be the puppets of those who are pulling the strings. And I'm going to show you who's pulling his strings. Um, let's listen to his position on torture. Would you allow U.S. interrogators to waterboard terrorist prisoners in order to extract information? Absolutely. You know, this question was in the previous debate, okay? And they asked it of Ted Cruz. What do you think of waterboarding and what would you do and how bad? And he was like really weak on it. He was, well, I, he didn't want to get involved because he thought waterboarding was bad. So, it's, of course it's bad, but it's not like, it's not chopping off heads, folks, okay, that I can tell you. So, they asked him, and he really gave a very incomplete answer. It was a terrible answer. He was stumbling and mumbling, and he's going like, well, I don't know, okay. Then they asked the question to me, well, what would you do? I said, I'd prove it immediately, but I'd make it also much worse. They said, what do you mean? I said, I'd do much worse. I said, they're chopping off our heads in the Middle East. They want to kill us. They want to kill us. They want to kill our country. They want to knock out our cities. And don't tell me it doesn't work. Torture works, okay, folks? Torture, no. torture does not work. Torture does not work. Experts have said torture does not work. Those who have been in uh, positions where, well, they actually had to torture somebody to get information out, they have always said it does not work. You can do the research to find out that it does not work. Who is chopping off people's heads? Our proxy terrorist organizations, Al-Qaeda and ISIS. So, indirectly, we are chopping off people's heads. Um, and there's an awful lot of Americans who... You know, we were the country that didn't torture. We tortured before Bush made it public. But then, when it became public, suddenly it was like, ah, torture, not such a big deal. It's a really big deal. You know, we become the people who chop off people's heads. But that doesn't seem to... Um, you know, it's not a thought that passes most Americans' minds. Fine. Torture them. I don't care. You know, we become them. We become the abuser. <sighs> Torture does not work, okay? But this guy, oh, it works, it works. What else did he say? And when you see these towns, and when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, rough. I said, please don't be too nice. Like when you guys put somebody in the car and you're protecting their head, you know, the way you put their hand over. Like, don't hit their head and they've just killed somebody, don't hit their head. I said, you can take the hand away, okay? You know, you've got an immature bully who can't control his own thoughts. He spews them out in a way that is really um, low, low. So I don't get 
I don't, I honestly do not get the support for this guy. He's telling police not to be too nice. Now, many Trump supporters understand that there is an awful lot of police brutality and he is encouraging it. I don't understand. To literally give families and give local law enforcement additional tools if an individual is reported to be a, a potential danger to themselves or others. Allow due process so no one's rights are trampled, but, but the ability to go to court, obtain an order, and then collect not only the firearms, but all, any, any weapons in the position or of that might individual. take the firearms first and then go to court because that's another system because a lot of times by the time you go to court it takes so long to go to court okay well that's our american system that is what the constitution uh designed for us this guy due process for my friends Hey, but no due process for Americans. Take the guns and then go to court. Really? So, you are supporting a president that does not support the Constitution and does not support that we have a country uh, that is supposed to be ruled by law and supports people or the police just going into somebody's home, grabbing their guns based on what someone else has said about them, like family. That's what this was about. Giving the tools to family and local police. And Pence mentions, well, you know, you're not going to trample on the due process. No, we will trample on due process. We're going to take their guns and then go to court. That's not, that's not the uh, innocent before proven guilty thing. Okay. Trump. Wilbur Ross. Um, Wilbur Ross. Do you know what Trump's relationship is with Wilbur Ross? Who Trump appointed to be our Secretary of Commerce. Jesuit trained Rothschild. Right here. Um, you know, the Rothschild bailed out Donald Trump. George Soros bailed out Donald Trump. Trump's private commitments to Rothschild disclosed by researcher. Donald Trump was in bankruptcy after the U.S. real estate crash of the 1980s, just before he was about to lose everything. He was bailed out by Rothschild, Incorporated, and thereafter became social and personal friends of the Rothschild family. Wilbur Ross, a former senior managing director at Rothschild, Incorporated, was appointed by President Trump to be the director for the Secretary of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Wow. Well, you're going to say, oh, that's just uh, something posted on the Internet that's not true. You can read Forbes article, Getting Donald Out of Debt, 25-Year-Old Ties That Bind, Trump and Wilbur Ross. So, Trump made a bold bet on Atlantic City when he opened a third casino, the Taj Mahal, in April 1990. Quickly, soon after, oh, he was heading towards bankruptcy. Who stepped in to bail him out? Wilbur Ross, the head of Rothschilds Incorporated, bankruptcy advising team. So, do you think he owes Wilbur Ross? Do you think maybe that's why he was appointed as Secretary of Commerce? Jared Kushner. Ross went into a private equity in 2000, forming W.L. Ross and Company. He still runs it, but he sold it to investment firm in Vesco in 2006. 
for some $375 million. In 2013, Invesco partnered with Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and others to buy real estate in Brooklyn. According to a May 2016 filing, Trump has stock shares in Invesco, European Growth Fund. Um, he claims to have sold his stock in Invesco, but there's no evidence that he has. And Trump and Wilbur, well, they're buddy-buddy, and they have been buddy-buddy for 25 years. They're neighbors in Florida. They're neighbors in New York. So, who's going to have the commander-in-chief's ear? None other than Wilbur Ross, Jesuit train, Rothschild, flunky. Now, the economy. I'm not going to spend any time reading the articles, but this constant uh, just these 24-7 we're hearing how great the economy is doing. Powell, who is the head of the Federal Reserve, just recently said uh, the economy it's remarkably positive. The outlook is remarkably positive and wow it's too good to be true. And of course Trump pats himself on the back. The economy the best it's ever been. The Trump administration better than any other administration. Man we turn this completely around. Americans are back at work and America has been made great again. And an awful lot of people believe what is completely a lie. Now this is Paul Craig Roberts, Republican, right? Former Assistant Treasury Secretary under Reagan. More jobs fiction. And this was posted September 7th. According to today's payroll jobs report from the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the economy created 200,000 new jobs in August. Isn't it amazing how they always create just about $200,000 every single, uh, 2,000, 200,000 jobs. Almost every single month, the, the number hardly ever changes. All right. These jobs, assuming that they exist, are reported to be in low-paid domestic service jobs such as transporting and selling goods, ambulatory health care services, waiting tables, mixing drinks. There are none in manufacturing or in the high-tech clean fingernail jobs that neoliberal economists promise the American workforce in exchange for letting the industrial and manufacturing jobs go to Asia. Asia. You know, yesterday I'm listening to Sean Hannity, and he, my God, talk about bowing down to Trump. He is going on and on about how great the economy is and how Trump has brought back major corporations and Americans are back to work. You got to check out. You have to check out. You've got to do a lot of research to find out what the jobs are that's being created and how they manipulate the numbers. So, uh, the Bureau of Labor Statistics does not explain how during August the household survey found unemployment to rise by 423,000 and the workforce to shrink by 692,000 for a total of 1 million 115,000 missing working people. But the economy created 2,000 new payroll jobs. According to the financial prostitutes, we have a booming economy and a labor shortage stemming from, oh God, 3.9% unemployment. Are you really believing that? Lower than I don't think it's ever, well, he says right here. Paul Craig Roberts, it's the lowest in my lifetime. Wow.
The economists are puzzled why there is no upward pressure on wages when there are not enough workers to go around. All of this mystery is due to the fact that the unemployment rate does not count workers who, are, who cannot find jobs, who've dropped out of the workforce. And if an unemployed person has not looked for a job in the past four weeks, and that means the type of job that is you know, coming from agencies, it doesn't mean the type of job where somebody is on foot just walking into stores, um, like the youth do. But we're talking, if they haven't looked for a job in four weeks, they're not counted as unemployed. We have and have had a rising number of Americans out of the labor force. They're just not counted. So all of you who are comfortable believing the economy is getting fabulous again, I hope that you keep in the back of your mind when you are writing those comments or thinking, yay, yay, Trump, I hope that videos like mine will trigger you to also think there are about a hundred million Americans not working or in the type of jobs that are not sustaining uh, any decent lifestyle. Employment situation summary. You can go to this link. States that there are 4.4 million workers who are involuntary part-time workers meaning they have no choice. They're part-time because most companies, they don't want to pay any kind of benefits or insurance, and they can't find full-time jobs. So if we have a booming economy in which there are more workers than full-time jobs, how does that make a booming economy? Considering all the contradictions in the Bureau of Labor Statistics data, and the inaccurate measure of unemployment, we really have no idea of the state of our economy. But if you look at all of the areas in this country that are impoverished, how could you possibly think the economy is booming? Um, the housing bubble is bursting. How home sellers are slashing prices at the highest rate in at least eight years. New vehicle sales collapse and pending home sales plunge as America's economic slowdown accelerates. Sears, Kmart closing more stores as retailers struggles continue. The retail apocalypse picks up speed as Sears, JCPenney, Brookstone, Mattress Firm spiral toward bankruptcy. And America is committing suicide. Over the past 12 months, the U.S. national debt has increased by $1.271 trillion. Oh, but every campaigner, every, every, every person who campaigns for the presidency, they claim they're going to reduce that debt. And they only make it higher. They only make it much higher. So what are we doing here? America is committing suicide in slow motion, and it is an absolutely heartbreaking thing to witness. It is almost as if we lack the will to survive as a nation. All we seem to care about is our comfort level at this moment. It's not only me saying that. Stock market just crashed in Italy. Argentina has panic raised interest rates to 65%. Many countries uh, have been brought to their knees. You think it's not going to happen here? You think the economy is, is uh, doing just fine, sustainable, and, we're, and we've been made great again because of that wonderful reality TV star? There are so many people who are claiming still the economy is not sustainable. It is crashing. It is artificially propped up 
It's been artificially propped up for, well, certainly since 2008. Do they know something we don't? Corporate insiders are selling stocks at the fastest pace in 10 years. Okay. So, people are hurting. More and more Americans are going down. And if you want to stay comfortable just believing that Trump is going to be fixing everything and just bringing back America and you want to believe the horse shit that you are being told, go for it. But you're believing something that is a lie. And that's why I have always said people need to reevaluate their beliefs. Because if you believe something that is a lie, you are making yourself a part of the problem, not a part of the solution.